So David, we're just getting underway. I'll call the meeting to order. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, I'm Betsy Heffernan. I am the treasurer for the school board. I am filling in for our president, Nicole Dash, who is unable to join us this evening. We're hoping she will be able to join us remotely a little bit later in the meeting. Uh, also joining us remotely is our board member, Nate Zimdars. All other board members are present tonight. This meeting is being held in accordance with open meetings laws. And this is my first time navigating the meeting, uh, so thank you for bearing with me tonight. We like to start our meetings by stating our district vision, which is one of Wisconsin's finest school districts, fostering excellence for all through innovation. And I'd also say to my veteran board members who have fulfilled this role, if I'm missing anything, or if you have any words of wisdom, please feel free to jump in and save me. Thank you. Smiling under my hat. All right. So first item on our agenda is recognition for our noetic math students. If we could have you stand and come forward, please. You get to represent the whole group tonight. <laughs> yes, thank you for coming. Yes, thank you for being with us. And can you tell us your name, please? Reagan Thompson. Hello, Reagan. Thanks for being with us. So Reagan is among several students that did very well in the Nomadic Math Contest. Our third grade team winners were John Quackle and Peyton Golenboom. Our fourth grade team winner was Liam Manor. Our fifth grade team member winner is Reagan Metoxin. And our sixth grade team winner and national honor roll is Autumn Manor. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. We have a certificate for you. The next picture there. All right. Do I participate? Yes. Or yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we're gonna face Miss Jobine. Congratulations, Thank you, Mom and Dad, for having her here tonight so we could recognize her. All right, the next item on our agenda. Uh, do we have any written comments from the public tonight? All right, we do not have any written comments from the public. Do we have any visitors that wish to address the board tonight? No. All right, we do not have visitors who wish to address the board tonight. Our next item on the agenda is adoption or adjustment of the agenda's order of items. Can I have a motion on the floor? Oh, we nobody, don't? If nobody has anything. Okay, thank you. All right, if no one has anything that we need to adjust on that, um, and I can just do next item, yep. we don't have to put this up to a vote. All right, nope. thank you for the clarification on that. All right, announcements of contributions to the district. We have a number of them. This <coughs> a quality plumbing donated $1,000 to the Eagles Shield Group. And Rippon FFA alumni donated $1,000 to the Ingalls Field Group. And then we have a series of donations here. These were all over $250, and they were donated through the Rippon Roar campaign to the Rippon Education Foundation. Jean Williams and Bob Am Amstead, and this is through the um, Oshkosh Area Foundation. Um, Patricia Jorgensen, Mark and Jacqueline Peterson, Gary Rodman and Colleen Byron, 
Tom Moniz, Dale Baird, Bruce Patrick, Seneca Foods, and Kay Quinney Bernard. So we're thankful for all those donations. All right. Thank you for that. And next up is our Ribbon High School student representative report. We're so glad to see you tonight. Can you please introduce yourselves? And um, yeah, I'm Abby. Okay. Um, I'm Erica, and we're the presidents for Student Council. So a couple things we've been doing in our meetings is the most recent one is talking about um, Winterfest. So that would be like games we would play in the snow during our advisory. Um, some other things we sell have been selling donuts and cookies for like the holidays, so over winter break we were going to do it, but we didn't end up doing that one. Um, Thanksgiving and then Valentine's Day we also plan on selling donuts or cookies. And then we've also been doing um, brainstorming ideas as like a group of new ways to have the kids see the announcements, just because like emails, no one looks at their email, so like talking about that, um, putting it on the school TVs that we have. Um, yeah, those are located in the comments, so it would be a great idea to have those projected up on there because we know each student actually goes through the lunchroom every day, so it would be a great way for them to see that action. Um, next, uh, we would like to acknowledge the amount of students that have been actually participating in basketball games, going to um, every single one, participating in the themes. Um, we've also been doing some new things with that, like we've started this thing called Best Seat in the House, so we actually put a couch in front of the student section and we allow a raffle ticket drawing to happen, and whoever's ticket wins, they get to pick two friends, and they also get a free pizza. So it's a great way for that we've been getting students interacted with basketball games. And then we also do like halftime games. So one we've been doing is lightning a lot of the time, and then we do like heads or tails with a big coin. Yeah. Um, next thing that we are going to be doing is we are doing a blood drive. Hopefully in March we're planning on doing it. Uh, because last blood drive was went really well. There was so much um, student participation in it. It was one of the most that the school's ever seen. So we want to keep that up and keep on doing more of those as well. That's it. All right. Thank you so much for that. We appreciate you being with us tonight. You are very welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. But if you have other activities, then you're going to get to the That's fine. They're going to get to the basketball. All right. Go yeah, cheer loudly. That was a great report. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you as well. All right. Uh, next up is the consideration of approval of the school bus parent and student handbook. Can I have a motion, please, to uh, put this on the floor? I move to approve the school bus parent and student handbook as presented. All right, that was Gary. Do we have a second? second. A second from Tom. Do we have any discussion on this? I'm just curious. There's one item that says items you're not supposed to have on the bus, and one is um, distracted by the device, which I understand, or trading cards. Is trading cards uh, something that's... <coughs> Uh, in cash right now, bus riders. That's a weird combination. I can tell you that Pokemon cards are the like at the core of many disputes at the younger grades, okay. right. and so kids will trade them and then have some serious regrets about the tra trade. But then there's no trade backs. It gets pretty intense. All right. So while it seems very small, it is sure. actually a source of contention for many of our universities. All right, cool. I'll date myself if I say it was marbles back in my day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For me, it was baseball cards. Yeah, baseball cards. And I always regretted all my trades. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Sounds good at the time, but then it's a point. All right, do we have any good further question. discussion? All right, so if I could ask for clarification. Do I call for a vote on the item? Is that the box I click? Okay, so we'll call for the vote on the item. Okay. Okay. Lifetime is not usually that big. Nope. All right, so I'm. Sometimes refreshing works. Refreshing the screen? Yep. Oh, 
okay, I did not do that, which would explain some things. Thank you for that. All right, so, so we have Gary, Gary making and the Tom. initial, yep. and then Tom with the second. Yep. Okay, and now we will call for the vote. Thanks for your patience with me, folks. Here we go. Okay, the motion passes unanimously. All right, can we do next item, correct? Correct. All right. Thanks for the help, folks. All right, so next up on the agenda, we consider approval of limits to open enrollment seats for 2022 and 2023. Also moved. All right, Andy? I second. And David? Do we have any discussion on this or questions? I'll just ask to make sure I'm understanding it right. Essentially, we've just gone back to what we were doing before. If we have spaces open, we're offering half the available spaces. But if we don't have any spaces open, then we don't have any spaces open. Correct. The only exception is with Odyssey. All of the spaces are open um, in Odyssey. And there's in that Any other uh, discussion on this? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All right, and the motion carries. Next up is approval of the consent agenda. Does anyone have anything that they wish to remove from the consent agenda for action at another point? If so, can I, uh, if no one does, then can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. From Missy. Any further discussion? No, no discussion. Possible upcoming action items. Consider approval of lead educator improvement points stipend. Can I have a motion to get this on the floor for discussion? I'm sorry, can we send that please? Oh, this is <clears throat> this is Gary. Basically, what we need to do is have either um, Kristen or Mary tell us about what this is. Yeah. Because because we don't, we don't have a memo. Yeah. But also, this is for action anyway. This is a possible upcoming. So yeah. we don't need to put it on the floor. We just need to ask questions. Let me go. I'll, I'll find the memo. Thank you very much. Yep. Sorry okay. about that, guys. It's okay. So just so that I'm clear, it does say that there is action required, but we don't need a vote on this? Yeah, that's okay. a mistake. It's yeah, a possible it should, should upcoming. Say no action. It should stay information. That's okay. Yep. You're so, calling it correctly, but it was all right. wrong. So in terms of what I do after we have our speaker is I'll just do next item and this will go right through. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks just after, after we have no more questions for anybody, yep. then we just move on and talk about it. All right. Sounds good. So did you want to have someone address us on this at this point? Um, yeah, I can talk about it. And, and Joan will work with me and um, Jolene will get the memo out to you. Um, basically, one of the things that happens um, to teachers at the the lead level or the highest level of salary schedule is that they're not eligible for either mid-level or end of level salary adjustments. Um, and so teachers at this level qualify you know, for the cost of living increase, which is sometimes small because we do those, those bigger increases for teachers at the three and six year marks. Um, but, but teachers that are at the top of the pay schedule are eligible for a non-reoccurring um, $1,250 stipend. 
um, and in our discussions with um, you know members of our of our teacher team, they were interested in in looking at ways to continue to move at the top um, for their efforts and and work with their um, with their professional development. So this is a proposal uh, that teachers who are at that lead level um, would be eligible for a permanent stipend of twelve fifty each time they complete three years of a, that qualifying stipend so that every three years they could make that stipend permanent um, and then they could again continue to earn new ones um, moving forward. Um, so if we were to do that we've been using this salary model um, that we're going into our 10th year. So we have educators the most that anyone's uh, completed the seven years of that stipend. Um, and so if we were to do this retro, there are some teachers that would, could acquire the stipend twice having kind of through that process. Um, and so we estimate that the first year cost to bring everybody on board um, would be between 21,000 and about 25,000. And then it would be about six to 8,000 additional each year moving forward. Um, and the reason that there's a range there is because this would go into effect at the end of this year. So those teachers, who are earning a stipend this year um, could could get that extra stipend and um, and receive this. Um, and Joan, I will need your help a little bit. When we look at kind of where our teacher pay falls, we tend to be in a higher percentile for our beginning teachers and our teachers who are in the middle of our salary range. And we start to fall a little bit um, in that percentile range for a higher end teacher. So this would this would bring them up a little bit. Um, and move in that right direction. I do have the memo attached. I apologize. That's and I switched to the info items. It was a busy. Okay. It was a busy week last week. We were pushing me at the end of the week. So we, yeah. Thank you, Joey. All right. Do we have any further questions and further discussion on this item? In that case, I will move along to our superintendent reports. So the first um, item on there um, is legislative updates, and we you know, have that on there in case there are things that, that are moving through. Right now we're in a place where we're starting to um, pick up our legislative breakfast. The first one was canceled um, just due to um, you know, concern with the virus, um, and so they, they decided to delay that. The breakfast, they had determined they wouldn't move to a virtual format. Um, and so they felt it was better to delay just because they were bringing so many people from across the state together. Um, and the other item on here for updates is our COVID update where we just share our numbers and where we've been at. Um, and in our district, um, the last couple of, of board meetings, we've been in our mask required status because we've been working to get our community number down to the 350s. We got, when we sent that benchmark, we were about the 600 per 100,000. Um, we got us, you know, into the 400s, um, and now um, we're, we're moving back up, and so uh, we're over 1,000 right now with our case rate, so I don't see us moving out of that status in the very near future. Um, and those who are kind of predicting trends with the virus are saying that we're probably a few weeks out yet from peak. So. Um, one of the things I did want to let you know, though, we have completely switched over to uh, NOAA. Um, and that is through the Department of Health Services. So we've moved away from um, COVID Connect and now we're using the NOAA system. So our families and staff need to just do a one-time register and then they can come into the, the clinic at any time um, to, to receive a test. We had been offering antigen and PCR tests this year um, and there is a shortage across the state right now. So we're only offering the PCR, um, the PCR tests. So. Um, that's important for you So all the schools are past required? Um, at, at this time, yep. So I get reports that teachers are teaching without masks, that there's a lot of sloppiness and wearing they, masks, a lot of harm in wearing them when they teach. I think if we're going to be a mask required, we need to say yes, because at this time, we're told that this, with any luck, is going to be a fairly short-lived spike. Now is the time when we can't be saying, hey, we're tired of doing this. Now is the time when we have to say, okay, let's just, we can do it and do it right for, we hope, two or three more weeks, and then we can possibly go back to relaxing 
Yeah, but it's been this way for a while. I haven't said anything, but with the numbers having shot up, I checked again today, and we're big about where we were last week in the county, and tomorrow I'll check and see where we are in the city, but we're so much higher than we've ever been at any time, and the school district had its highest reading last week that I know of, and so I just think it's time to say, okay, we've been a little bit sloppy, several, at least the reports I get are that lots of teachers have gotten quite sloppy in some buildings, and I think it's time for us to say, no, you can't do it, now's the time when we have to be a little bit more careful, and then with any luck, we'll be able to relax it. And I know the principals are here to, to hear your message. There are times where, for instructional reasons, someone may um, to interact or communicate with a student and, and use that professional judgment, but yeah, we need to be <coughs> keeping everyone safe, so it's a good reminder. I would also share, I did um, reach out to Department of Health Services to set up a vaccination clinic, so we'll have one here hopefully the end of January or beginning of February, um, and it will be um, open to anyone in the community. Um, you don't need to sign up ahead of time. You can show up. We'll have kiosks there. If anyone doesn't know where their vaccination card is, we can look up. So we're trying to remove every barrier. We hope to have a Spanish-speaking um, you know, interpreter there um, as well. And it is for the booster, but it is also for um, initial vaccination, and we'll have a follow-up for those um, to come back for a second dose. And I'm told the goal is to offer all three um, of the boosters. So, again, we can accommodate anyone that comes and um, and we may be able to do multiple days. It just it just uh, kind of depends what we think volume might be. We'll probably do some kind of just even a quick survey just to say, hey, if you're even thinking about it, let us know so we can have some type of estimate for uh, for number of cases. But that's that's good good news for us as well. Thank you, Mary. That's fantastic. Thank you for all the efforts that you and your staff have done in this in this uh, pandemic. All right, do we have any further discussion on that item? If not, we will move on to the curriculum, curriculum department highlights for January. Anything that we need to discuss or have questions about on this item? in our winter diagnostic assessment window, so that'll be wrapping up here, and, and uh, we can there in February, March, we get you that mid-year report so you can see where we've gone from that initial data um, collection to mid-year. All right. Thank you. Business-related reports. Uh, the general fund interim budget report. Any questions or discussion on this item? Seeing none, we will move to our next item. Food service interim budget report. Any questions or discussion on this? All right. The timing on this, Joan, is fairly standard, right? That we have these delays. Yeah. I think we're even more delayed than normal as far as getting uh, some revenue. Uh, and paying out our invoices as well. Uh, but yeah, we're always delayed. And, uh, I did make a note in there, kind of an up to date as of when I posted it. Uh, we were, you know, had a net loss of like 136000 just due to the timing of receiving the federal reimbursement. But, uh, but we are structured, you know, with our, our fixed price per meal to, uh, to be self sustaining and not to require transfer. So. Everything's doing fine. It's just uh, thank you. Okay. Next item on our agenda: school operations reports. Did we have questions or anything you wanted to know more about? In the <coughs> uh, two. Um, one is Tanya. I saw you made eight different soups. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. It was fun. Um, well, when I started, um, I think Dee had told me that Myra used to make breakfast for everybody and cook it in the kitchen, and I hate breakfast food, so I had to find something <laughs> that I did like, so soup was what had, had come, and it's kind of expanded from there. Oh, that's awfully nice. Uh, number two on the catalyst, uh, uh, 
middle school. I saw the noetic results that we had four of our 30 in the top 50 percent. For me, it's about 15, 15 to be in the top 50 percent, given that the 30 students have to be looking at the moment. I'm not concerned about the results. Is there a difference between your second students to appear versus other others? I guess that's a true question. Christy, that's probably something to follow up with Jessica. Use her on just to see where she's at and maybe we can get an answer now. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Great. Thank you very much to our principals for, for these reports. They're very, very helpful. We appreciate them.